Okay, so welcome to this quick video which will introduce chapter 1 to you. Uh, most of this should be revision from GCSE. Uh, what we're going to be doing is revising the structure of an atom very quickly, revise the meaning of your mass number and atomic number, and then the new thing which some people find quite tricky is to calculate the specific charge of things. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so physics we use the uh, Rutherford Bohr model of an atom, which basically means that we've got protons and neutrons in the nucleus and these are surrounded by electrons in discrete orbits like so. <clears throat> now notice with an atom obviously you've got the same number of electrons as you have protons because atoms have no overall charge. That's important. If you talk about something that's got a charge then it is an ion not an atom. Okay. So, you should know that from GCSE. Protons and neutrons in the central nucleus, electrons around the outside. Now the protons, we should remember, have got a charge of plus one. Neutrons have got a charge of zero, and electrons have a charge of minus one. Okay? At GCSE, that's all you'll need to know. Now what we need to know is that actually what these numbers are, is they are what we call relative charges, and they're multiples of... 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so that's the standard unit of charge, well, standard amount of charge rather. Every charge is a multiple of that number. Okay, so how do we know how many protons, neutrons, electrons, etc. are in an atom? Well, fortunately, we've got lots of information on the periodic table. So if we take carbon, which is obviously symbol capital C, it has a mass number of 12 and an atomic or proton number of 6. So that's the clue as to what this bottom number is. It's sometimes called the proton number and indeed it tells us, bizarrely, the number of protons in an atom. So in this case, this carbon-12 atom has got 6 protons. This top number is the mass number. And that tells us the number of protons plus neutrons in the atom. So in this carbon-12 atom, there are a total of 12 protons plus neutrons. So how can we work out the number of neutrons? Well, fairly obviously, if we've got 12 protons plus neutrons, we know that from this number here, and we've got 6 protons, then the number of neutrons is obviously 12 minus 6, which is 6. Now, if this is an atom... This bottom number, the proton number, tells us the six protons. If it's an atom, there's no overall charge. So in an atom, that also tells us the number of electrons. Only if it's an uncharged atom, remember. Okay, so here's another atom. This is iron, obviously. Work out how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in an atom of this iron. Okay, so number of protons, which we've all got this, is obviously 26. We just look at the lower number here, that tells us the number of protons. So because it's an atom, the number of electrons is also 26, because it's an atom, no charge, protons equals electrons. Number of neutrons, well the mass number is 56. The proton number or atomic number is 26, so it's 56 minus 26, which equals 30. Okay, so really up until now, everything we've been looking at should be GCC revision, really. Uh, the new thing we need to know for this part of the chapter is how to calculate the specific charge of a particle or an ion. Now, as you can see here, the formula for specific charge is charge divided by mass. Now, the charge has to be in coulombs and the mass has to be in kilograms, so the units of specific charge are coulombs per kilogram, or often written coulomb kilogram to the minus one. Now this formula is not provided on the data sheet specifically. However, as we will see in a second, there is a way to find it. So here we are at the AQA data formula sheet which is a copy of what you get in the exams. And lots and lots of data on here. If you scroll down, or if you look down, 
you get here the electron charge mass ratio and down here you get the proton charge mass ratio now this isn't listed as being specific charge but it's exactly the same thing so if you can't remember in your exam whether it's mass divided by charge or charge divided by mass have a look at your data sheet the correct version is given for both the electron and the proton so it's charge divided by mass that is how you work it out okay so let's look at how to actually work out the specific charge of different things so let's work it out for the proton first of all so the specific charge of a proton is going to be the charge of a proton which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs divided by the mass of the proton which is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms now where have I got those numbers from? well I've looked at the data sheet to find those if you didn't know them I now simply work that out and that works out to be 9.58 times 10 to the 7 and don't forget units of course coulombs kilograms to the minus one now people make lots and lots of mistakes doing these questions uh, usually because they've typed into the calculator wrong always check your powers of 10 and work those out in your head so here I'm looking at this I know that 10 to the minus 19 divided by 10 to the minus 27 should be around 10 to the 8 yeah, because minus 19 minus minus 27, if you remember in your standard form working, minus 19 minus minus 27 is 8. So the fact I've got 9.58 times 10 to the 7, yes, I'm happy with that. That looks to be in the right area. Okay, so we've just seen how to work out the specific charge for a single particle. Let's try something a bit more complicated. Let's try working out the specific charge of a nucleus. So let's suppose we've got our old friend, carbon-12. Okay, we're trying to work out the specific charge of the nucleus. Now, fairly obviously, if we're working out the specific charge of the atom, that would be zero, because the charge is zero. So we're just working out, and this is a common question, the specific charge of the nucleus. So what's in the nucleus? Well, we know there's six protons in the nucleus, and we know that there's also six neutrons in this nucleus as well. Okay, so the specific charge of the nucleus is going to be 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Okay, that's the total charge of the nucleus. And then the mass, we're going to say, is 12 lots of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Now, neutrons are slightly more massive than protons, okay, but to three significant figures the mass is the same. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, so that's the basic sum that we're doing. So now I will be tend to work this out in stages. So 6 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 is 9.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And 12 times 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 is 20.04 times 10 to the minus 27. Now again, here is where I would now start to think about what am I expecting my answer to be? Okay, well I've got roughly 10 on the top line and roughly 20 on the bottom line, so I'm expecting an answer, the numerical answer to be in the region of 5-ish, and I've got 10 to the minus 19 divided by 10 to the minus 27, so I'm expecting it to be about 5 times 10 to the 7. Okay, so when I work that out on my calculator, that works out to be 0 0.479 times 10 to the 8, which obviously, if I now start putting that in proper form, that equals 4.79 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. So again, I'm happy with that answer. That's close to what I expected. I've not simply written down what's on my calculator without any checking at all. Okay, so the other thing you might need to do is work out the charge of an ion. So let's suppose we start with our carbon-12 atom. 
And then let's suppose that it loses two electrons. So if it loses two electrons, it would now have a charge of plus two. So in this ion now, we've got six protons, six neutrons, and because it's now lost two electrons, we started with six, we've now got four electrons. So if we were supposed to work out the specific charge of this ion, we would use exactly the same formula, specific charge equals charge divided by mass. So the charge of the ion is now two lots of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And we have to divide that by the mass. So we've still got 12 lots of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. But now, because it's an ion, remember last time it was just the nucleus, because this is an ion, we've also got four electrons. So the mass, we have to add on four times, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Again, looking at the mass of an electron from the data sheet. Now when we work that out, and again I do this in stages, so the specific charge is 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 20.04 times 10 to the minus 27 plus uh, 4, 4, 36.44 times 10 to the minus 31. Now is the stage where I pretend to type this into my calculator carefully. Okay? And when you do that, you work out that the answer, specific charge, eventually works out to be 1.6 times 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. Now, if you reworked it out without adding on the mass of the electrons, you would still get this answer here. Because the mass of the electron is about one two thousandth the mass of a proton or neutron. So it has very little effect overall on the answer. However, if you didn't show the mass of the electrons in your working, so if you didn't show the 4 times 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31, if you didn't show this here, you would then get no marks for the question because that would be classed as a physics error. So when you work out the mass of an ion, you must include the mass of the electrons even if it has no significant effect on the overall numerical answer. Okay, so just to finish off then, here's a few quick tips when you're doing specific charge questions. First of all, you must check powers of 10 manually in your head to avoid blunders. It's so easy to type these things into your calculator wrong. Don't do it. Right? Here's a good tip, apart from the electron, now the electron has the largest specific charge of any particle because it's got the smallest mass, most of your answers will usually be in the order of 10 to the 7 coulombs per kilogram. The reason for that is you're usually multiplying, sorry, you're usually dividing a multiple of 10 to the minus 19, which is the charge, by a mass of something times 10 to the minus 27, because protons and neutrons have a mass of times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So usually, your answer should be around 10 to the 7. So if it isn't, look carefully, check it. And here's the last thing we learnt on the last little bit. For ions, you've got to include the mass of the electron in the calculation. Chances are it won't affect the answer of the numerical answer overall, but if you don't include them, the examiner will class it as a physics error, and you then won't get any marks for that question. Okay, right, now have a go at the specific charge worksheet, and don't forget to bring that with you next lesson. Thank you.